Hello everyone, this is Ifeinwa. Welcome to Finding Africa, to explore and share the beauty of Africa, starting with folk stories from Southern Nigeria. Why the sun and the moon live in the sky? Many years ago, the sun and water were great friends and both lived on the earth together. The sun very often used to visit the water, but the water never returned his visits. At last, the sun asked the water why it was that he never came to see him in his house. The water replied that the sun's house was not big enough, and that if he came with his people, he would drive the sun out. He then said, If you wish me to visit you, you must build a very large compound. But I warn you that it will have to be a tremendous place as my people are very numerous and take up a lot of room. The son promised to build a very big compound and soon afterwards he returned home to his wife, the moon, who greeted him with a broad smile when he opened the door. The son told the moon what he had promised the water and the next day commenced building a huge compound in which to entertain his friend. When it was completed, he asked the water to come and visit him the next day. When the water arrived, he called out to the sun and asked him whether it would be safe for him to enter, and the sun answered, Yes, come in, my friend. The water then began to flow in, accompanied by the fish, and all the water animals. Very soon, the water was knee-deep, so he asked the sun if it was still safe, and the sun again said, Yes, so more water came in. When the water was level with the top of a man's head, the water said to the sun, Do you want more of my people to come? And the sun and the moon both answered, Yes not knowing any better. So the water flowed on until the sun and moon had to perch themselves on top of the roof. Again, the water addressed the sun, but receiving the same answer and more of his people rushing in, the water very soon overflowed the top of the roof and the sun and the moon were forced to go up into the sky where they have remained ever since. Moral. Respect yourself. Be honest with yourself and your friends. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. Why the flies bother the cows? When Adia Haumo was queen of Calabar, being very rich and hospitable, she used to give big feasts to all the domestic animals but never invited the wild beasts as she was afraid of them. At one feast she gave, there were three large tables and she told the cow to sit at the head of the table as she was the biggest animal present and share out the food. The cow was quite ready to do this and the first course was passed which the cow shared out amongst the people but forgot the fly because he was so small. When the fly saw this, he called out to the cow to give him his share. But the cow said, Be quiet, my friend. You must have patience. When the second course arrived, the fly again called out to the cow. But the cow merely pointed to her eye and told the fly to look there and he would get food later. At last, all the dishes were finished and the fly, having been given no food by the cow, went supperless to bed. The next day, the fly complained to the queen, who decided that, as the cow had presided at the feast, and had not given the fly his share, but had pointed to her eye, for the future, the fly could always get his food from the cow's eyes wherever she went. And even at the present time, wherever the cows are, 
the flies can always be seen feeding off their eyes in accordance with the queen's orders. Moral. Be a fair leader because you will be held accountable if you are not. Why the cats kill rats. Ansa was king of Calabar for 50 years. He had a very faithful cat as a housekeeper and a rat was his houseboy. The king was an obstinate, headstrong man, but was very fond of the cat who had been in his store for many years. The rat, who was very poor, fell in love with one of the king's servant's girls, but was unable to give her any presents as he had no money. At last, he thought of the king's store. So in the night time, being quite small, he had little difficulty having made a hole in the roof in getting into the store. He then stole corn and native pears and presented them to his sweetheart. At the end of the month, when the cat had to render her account of the things in the store to the king, it was found that a lot of corn and native pears were missing. The king was very angry at this and asked the cat for an explanation. But the cat could not account for the loss until one of her friends told her that the rat had been stealing the corn and giving it to the girl. When the cat told the king, he called the girl before him and had her flogged. The rat he handed over to the cat to deal with and dismissed them both from his service. The cat was so angry at this that she killed and ate the rat and ever since that time, Whenever a cat sees a rat, she kills and eats it. Moral. Don't steal. The story of the lightning and the thunder. In the olden days, the thunder and lightning lived on the earth amongst all the other people. But the king made them live at the far end of the town as far as possible from other people's houses. The thunder was an old mother sheep and the lightning was her son, a ram. Whenever the ram got angry, he used to go about and burn houses and knock down trees. He even did damage on the farms and sometimes killed people. Whenever the lightning did these things, his mother used to call out to him in a very loud voice to stop and not to do any more damage. But the lightning did not care in the least for what his mother said. And when he was in a bad temper, used to do a very large amount of damage. At last, the people could not stand it any longer and complained to the king. So the king made a special order that the sheep, thunder, and her son, the ram, lightning, should leave the town and live in the far bush. This did not do much good, as when the ram got angry, he still burnt the forest and the flames sometimes spread to the farms and consumed them. So the people complained again, and the king banished both the lightning and the thunder from the earth and made them live in the sky, where they could not cause so much destruction. Ever since, when the lightning is angry, he commits damage as before, but you can hear his mother, the thunder, rebuking him and telling him to stop. Sometimes, however, when the mother has gone away some distance from her naughty son, you can still see that he is angry and is doing damage, but his mother's voice cannot be heard. Moral. Anger does not tame anger. Learn how to talk to your children so they are better able to express themselves. Why the bush cow and the elephant are bad friends. The bush cow and the elephant were always bad friends. And as they could not settle their disputes between themselves, they agreed to let the head chief decide. 
The cause of their unfriendliness was that the elephant was always boasting about his strengths to all his friends, which made the bush cow ashamed of himself, as he was always a good fighter and feared no man or animal. When the matter was referred to the head chief, he decided that the best way to settle the dispute was for the elephant and bush cow to meet and fight one another in a large open space. He decided that the fight should take place in the marketplace on the next market day, when all the country people could witness the battle. When the market day arrived, the bush cow went out in the early morning and took up his position some distance from the town on the main road to the market and started bellowing and tearing up the ground. As the people passed, he asked them whether they had seen anything of the big, big one, which was the name of the elephant. A bush buck, who happened to be passing, replied, I am only a small antelope, and I'm on my way to the market. How should I know anything of the movements of the big, big one? The bush cow then allowed him to pass. After a little time, the bush cow heard the elephant trumpeting and could hear him as he came nearer, breaking down trees and trampling down the small bush. When the elephant came near the bush cow, they both charged one another and a tremendous fight commenced in which a lot of damage was done to the surrounding farms and many of the people were frightened to go to the market and return to their houses. At last, the monkey, who had been watching the fights from a distance whilst he was jumping from branch to branch high up in the trees, thought he would report what he had seen to the head chief. Although he forgot several times what it was he wanted to do, which is a little way monkeys have, he eventually reached the chief's house and jumped upon the roof where he caught and ate a spider. He then climbed to the ground again and commenced playing with a small stick, but he very soon got tired of this, and then, picking up a stone, he rubbed it backwards and forwards on the ground in an aimless sort of way, whilst looking in the opposite direction. This did not last long, and very soon he was busily engaged in a minute personal inspection. His attention was then attracted by a large praying mantis which had fluttered into the house making much clatter with its wings. When it settled, it immediately assumed its usual prayerful attitude. The monkey, after a careful stalk, seized the mantis and having deliberately pulled the legs off one after the other, he ate the body and sat down with his head on one side, looking very wise, but in reality thinking of nothing. Just then, the chief caught sight of him while he was scratching himself and shouted out in a loud voice, Ha! Monkey, is that you? What do you want here? At the chief's voice, the monkey gave a jump and started chattering like anything. After a time, he replied very nervously. Oh, yes, uh, uh, of course. Yeah, yes, I, I came to see you. Then he said to himself, I wonder what on earth it was I came to tell the chief. But it was no use. Everything had gone out of his head. Then the chief told the monkey he might take one of the ripe plantains hanging up in the veranda. The monkey did not want telling twice, as he was very fond of plantains. He soon tore off the skin, and holding the plantain in both hands, took bite after bite from the end of it, looking at it carefully after each bite. Then the chief remarked that the elephant and the bush cow ought to have arrived by that time, as they were going to have a great fight. Directly the monkey heard this, he remembered what it was he wanted to tell the chief. So, having swallowed the piece of plantain he had placed in the side of his cheek, 
he said, Ah, that reminds me. And then, after much chattering and making all sorts of funny grimaces, finally made the chief understand that the elephant and bush cow, instead of fighting where they had been told, were having it out in the bush on the main road leading to the market, and thus had stopped most of the people coming in. When the chief heard this, he was much incensed and called for his bow and poisoned arrows and went to the scene of the combat. He then shot both the elephant and the bush cow and throwing his bow and arrows away, ran and hid himself in the bush. About six hours afterwards, both the elephant and bush cow died in great pain. Ever since, when wild animals want to fight between themselves, they always fight in the big bush and not on the public roads. But, as the fight was never definitely decided between the elephant and the bush cow, whenever they meet one another in the forest, even to the present time, they always fight. Moral if you and your friend fight every time you meet, you are not really friends. You should therefore stay away from each other and make new friends who are peaceful. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the story, hit the subscribe button. If you didn't enjoy the story, still hit the subscribe button because you may like the next one. Until next time, enjoy life. Finding Africa. Finding Africa.